Who is Abaddon the Despoiler? Ezekiel Abaddon, more commonly known as Abaddon the Despoiler, is the War Master of Chaos, the former first captain of the Sons of Horus Legion, and now Absolute Master of the Black Legion and rumored to be the clone progeny of War Master Horus. He is the most powerful War Master of all, successor to Horus and blessed by all four of the Gods of Chaos. Despite being the War Master of Chaos, Abaddon has refused giving himself fully over to the ruinous powers as the Demon Primarchs have, as this would limit his existence beyond the Eye of Terror and push his ultimate vengeance against the Imperium beyond his grasp. Abaddon was the firstborn son of Tarkadon, one of the most mighty of Chthonia's gang warlords. As he reached adulthood, his father accepted him to complete a Chthonian coming-of-age ritual that involved executing his closest comrades. Abaddon refused and expressed his disdain for kingship, instead slaying his father and his bodyguards. Though he lived in exile after that point, his massive build and natural ferocity saw him grow to be a legend amongst his people. Before long, the vicious young warrior came to the attention of the Luna Wolves. Saved from death after an ambush from a rival gang, Abaddon was confronted by Hastir Sejanus and Surakul. Abaddon expressed that he never had any desire to be a king and was subsequently accepted into the Luna Wolves and converted into a space marine on Luna. After his completion as an Astartes, he was confronted by Horus and pledged service, being given a coin by the Primarch. During the Great Crusade, Abaddon rose to the prestigious post of First Captain. He loved and worshipped Horus as a father, and it was rumored that Abaddon was one of the few sons of Horus, those space marines who were created directly from Horus's gene seed. Extremely proud and quick to anger, Abaddon's martial record was unsurpassed by that of any other Luna wolf. Bellicose by temperament, Abaddon was usually the most hawkish of the War Master's advisors. During the final years of the Crusade, Abaddon disagreed, sometimes violently, with Horus's decision to parley with the Inerex, a human civilization that allowed an alien species to coexist with them. During the Ulanar Crusade, Abaddon accompanied Horus and a detachment of Terminators from the First Company in a daring strike on the headquarters of the Orc war boss Urlok Urg. While the majority of the detachment held the entrance to the war boss's tower against the hordes of Greenskins, Horus confronted and slew the war boss. As the Greenskin hordes fled in terror, Horus found every one of the Terminators had fallen except for Abaddon barely alive and buried under a mountain of orc bodies. In addition to his position as first captain, Abaddon was also one of the four members of the Mournival, a special advisory council to the War Master since its inception. He took his position extremely seriously, but did enjoy sharing his sense of humor with his Mournival brothers. Abaddon eventually grew frustrated and angry at the Emperor's supposed abandonment of the Space Marine Legions. Feelings which swelled to the surface when Horus lay near to death on Davin. A member of the warrior lodge within the Sons of Horus, he went along with Erebus's plan to take the War Master to the Serpent Lodge for healing, beginning Abaddon's road to damnation. After Horus's recovery, Abaddon grew ever more protective of his Primarch and his Legion's reputation, to the point to where he saw remembrance or criticism and Imperial investigation into Legion activities as threats and insults that cannot be borne. He therefore sanctioned the murder of Ignance Carcassi and the blaming of Legion caused civilian casualties upon Garvio Loken. This course of action was frustrated by the refusal of Terek Torgadon to accede to the plan and the Mournful Brotherhood was effectively broken as a result. Abaddon's thinking would prove to be in tune with that of his commander, who would eventually order not only the death of Carcassi, but also that of Loken, seemingly destined to be in lockstep with the War Master when Horus came to the warrior lodge of his legion to sway them into following him onto what would prove to be the path of heresy. Abaddon was amongst the first to swear his unquestioning loyalty. Abaddon was present at several of the major actions of the Horus Heresy. During the purging of the Loyalist Legionnaires at Estvan III, Abaddon notably took to the field to attend the final meeting of what had once been the Mournival 
at which he dueled with Garvio Loken. Though slightly wounded in combat, Abaddon emerged the victor. Abaddon again dueled Loken on the Ventral Spirit in the aftermath of the Battle of Molech, after the Knights Errant attempted to assassinate Horus. During the Battle of Tresolian, Abaddon relished the massacre of his former comrade Briar Tyfringer, and expressed shock when Horus, cleansed of some corruption by the Spear of Rus, expressed regret for how much blood had been spilled in his war. Subsequently, Abaddon was charged with hunting down and to finish off the wolves at the Battle of Yarent. However, the wool Luna wolves were ultimately escaped thanks to the aid of Korax and Abaddon, who returned to Horus's side during the muster at Ulanor. During the subsequent Lissola War, Abaddon was given the important duty of capturing Luna from the Loyalist forces. Commanding a fleet of Sons of Horus, word bearers under Zardu Layak, and Thousand Sons under Azik Ahirman, Abaddon's forces initially clashed with the White Scar's fleet under Jubal Khan. During the boarding of the White Scar's battleship, Lance of Heaven, alongside Layak, Abaddon dueled and slew Jubal. He next directed the battle barge, War Oath, in a kamikaze attack on the defensive ring around Luna, devastating the Loyalist defenses as he teleported onto the moon's surface with his Jesterian elite. During the fighting inside Luna's gene labs, he convinced the Selenor matriarch Helosia-78 to join Horus instead of following through with Rogaldorn's orders to destroy their precious gene tech in order to prevent it from falling into traitor hands. Abaddon was at Horus's side during the siege of Imperial Palace. By this time, Horus was literally swelling with the power of the Chaos Gods and spent much of his time comatose inside Lupercal's court scanning the warp. By this point, Abaddon began to grow openly resentful of his gene father, viewing him as displaying weakness and becoming a slave to the Chaos Gods. He resisted the urge to kneel before Horus, but when in the moments that War Master's old charisma returned, so did the First Captain's admiration. He blamed much of Horus' state on Zardu Layek, but was forbidden from killing the Dark Apostle. With Horus increasingly absent from command of the battle, holding the traitor war effort together in the face of the rebellious traitor Primarchs, increasingly fell to Abaddon. Abaddon later learned from Layek that Horus' very soul was being consumed by the Chaos Gods as they poured their power into him, and that the War Master's remaining time was limited. Abaddon asked, what would happen if Horus died before he slew the Emperor, to which Laic replied that the gods would simply find a new champion. In the battle for the Lion's Gate spaceport, Abaddon led 3,000 sons of Horus in an attack on the complex's highest levels alongside Zardu Laic, Korn, and Kroger. During the battle, Khan became stranded behind Imperial lines as Rogel Dorn closed in, and rather than his ally uh, be abandoned, Abaddon led an attack to rescue the World Eater. Needing to protect the future champion of the gods, Laic sacrificed himself to hold off the Primarch and allow Abaddon and Karn to escape. By this point in the battle, Abaddon had become frustrated with Horus for not taking to the field of battle himself. After the fall of Lion's Gate, Abaddon observed the same flaw in the Sartarian Gate and Perturbo had also discovered. Wishing to end the war as quickly as possible in order to save the quickly decaying Horus, Abaddon proposed exploiting the breach in the Sardarene to end the siege in a matter of weeks as opposed to months. Perturbo was hesitant, thinking Dorn also knew of the flaw and that the attack was a trap. Abaddon convinced Perturbo to allow him to lead the assault, freeing the Lord of Iron from humiliation and his own legion's blood should not fail. For the operation, Abaddon assembled the whole of the Emperor's children by convincing Edelon to the attack the Cedarine walls on the surface while he led Jagesterian. Reaver attack squad 18th Company and the 19th Companies in a subterranean assault. However, just as Perturbo suspected, the attack was a trap set by the Loyalists. Many of the Sons of Horus's Dark Mechanicum provided burrowing vehicles broke down. In the ensuing ambush led by Garville Loken and Nathaniel Garrow, Abaddon managed to slay Bel Sapitus, but barely escaped with his life. He vowed to one day kill Perturbo and his Dark Mechanicum allies for allowing the disaster to develop as it had. He also found that he had loved the heat of desperate battle to the point to where leaving it made him weep. 
During the final confrontation, Abaddon fought against Terminators of the Imperial Fist Legion aboard Horus's battle barge, the Ventral Spirit, and thus was not present when Horus was defeated by the Emperor. Abaddon's anguish at the death of his father drove him completely mad. Before the Sons of Horus retreated, Abaddon led vicious counterattacks that reclaimed the War Master's body, before leading the retreat into the Eye of Terror. Shortly after the heresy, Abaddon abandoned the Legion. Broken by the death of Horus and sick of war, he wandered alone into the Eye of Terror. Meanwhile, within the Eye itself, civil war soon broke out amongst the traitor legions. Becoming embroiled in a war against the Emperor's children, the sons of Horus's fortress of Lupercalius on Malim was destroyed and the Emperor's children stole the corpse of War Master Horus himself. Eventually, with the help of Fabius Bile, a number of clones of Horus were created, an act which disgusted the Sons of Horus. With the Sons of Horus in a desperate situation, warband leaders Falcus Kibre, Iskander Kaon, and Leveron Eucharist decided to seek out the Ventral Spirit and Abaddon with it. With the help of the word bearers, Sargon, they eventually found the Ventral Spirit buried in the former Eldar world of Ice Cariel in the Elysian Vale deep within the Eye of Terror. Inside they found Abaddon who revealed he had dispatched Sargon to bring them to him. Abaddon had become reinvigorated at the news of the cloning of Horus and was assembling forces to end the abomination. Gathering allies around himself, Abaddon moved on the Canticle City in the demon world of Harmony. During the vicious battle that followed, Abaddon took up the Talon of Horus and boarded the Emperor's Children cruiser Flesh Market, which was commanded by Fabius Bile. Inside, they found horribly deformed, mutated adolescent clones of 20 Primarchs. After putting an end to these monstrosities, Abaddon and his forces next met the clone of Horus himself. After shattering Worldbreaker with the Talon of Horus, Abaddon impaled the clone of his gene father. With his dying breath, Horus remembered Abaddon as his son, to which Abaddon replied he was not his son any longer. Abaddon's forces subsequently purged the Emperor's children from Harmony and proclaimed himself as the, su as the successor of Horus. He would begin a new war, a long war. After his victory, Ab Abaddon proceeded to purge the Black Legion of traitorous and self-serving elements, such as the Word Bearer's champion, Ranax the Unspoken, the Nurgle Chaos Lord per Purgor the Patricent, and the Celestini Sorcerer Hex Galamir. Making a bloody examples of these renegades, Abaddon was able to cement his hold on power over the Legion. Now the unquestioned leader of the Sons of Horus, Abaddon eventually renamed them the Black Legion to expunge the name of Horus, who failed in his attempt to take over the Imperium. Studying what his predecessor had done, Abaddon realized that while he needed the court the ruinous powers as allies, he became determined to never become a thrall to their will, as had been the case with Horus in the end. Abaddon slowly forged the Black Legion into a formidable fighting force with the help of his Exekuran and fought against the primary rival, Death Guard Lord Thagus um, Darovic. While simultaneously dealing with Darovic with the help of Iskander, Abaddon eventually returned to the head of the Diabolic Horde, which ravaged entire systems around the Eye of Terror. There, the Imperium can muster the strength to halt it. During this first Black Crusade, Abaddon managed to slay his longtime enemy, Sigimund, in a duel after failing to sway him to his cause. Though badly wounded in the fight, Sigimund, Abaddon survived and made many bloody pacts with the infernal powers. At the end of the Crusade, in the crypts below the Tower of Silence in Urilon, Abaddon recovered the demon sword Draconian. With the howling demon blade in his fist, Abaddon became nigh unstoppable. Whole cities were burned in sacrifice to the ever-hungry demons of chaos, and entire armies were torn apart by gibbering warp entities. Abaddon's power swelled to inhuman proportions as the gods of chaos rewarded him lavishly, and he undertook acts of fiendish bravery which horrified those who stood against him.
Abaddon continued to forcibly absorb old war bands of the Sons of Horus into his forces, most notably the Sons of the Eye. Many other exiled and damned members of the Nine Traitor Legions were also allowed to join his ranks. During the Gothic War, Abaddon almost brought an entire sector to its knees. His fleets were augmented with a newly constructed flagship known for good reason as the Planet Killer. Alongside this, he somehow activated and gained control of the Blackstone Fortresses, mysterious constructions allegedly predating the Imperium itself that combined to generate prodigious destructive firepower. Abaddon attacked while the sector was cut off from reinforcements by warp storms and caused huge damage to the Imperial battle fleet, destroyed a number of planets and devastated many more. Only the intervention of the Eldar enabled Imperial forces to stop the Chaos fleet. In his most recent assault, the 13th Black Crusade, Abaddon managed to gain a foothold in the Cadian Gate, planning to extend the Eye of Terror to encompass even Terra in a plan known as the Crimson Path. Abaddon's forces were able to gain a foothold in Cadia to the point where only a single Imperial Bastion, Kassar Kraft, remained. After the vicious battle of the Elysian Fields, Kraft fell and Abaddon moved in to the last stage of his plan, destroying the Cadian pylons. In the final battle beneath Cadia's surface, Abaddon personally clashed with a variety of foes including Saint Celestine, the Gemini Superior, Inquisitor Gravax, Orvin Heifel, and Uzarkur E. Creed for control of the pylons, Abaddon bested them all and managed to defeat Celest Celestine who had become depowered by the activation of Cadian's pylons. However, despite the loss of an arm, Creed distracted Abaddon long enough for Celestine to impale him from behind with her sword. Horribly wounded, Abaddon was forced to teleport back to the Vengeful Spirit. But despite his wounds, Abaddon was able to finish off Cadia by redirecting the debris of the Blackstone Fortress, Will of Eternity, into its surface. The impact destabilized the pylons, and Cadia was sucked into the warp. Despite the final destruction of Cadia, Abaddon became enraged when he learned that Zarephiston, that the Magus Balestrius call, had escaped with a relic of profound importance to Calcius. Abaddon pursued Call and the remaining Imperial survivors to the world, but his prize was denied to him by Eldar, who aided the Imperials and forced him to withdraw. Abaddon later re-emerged at the head of a massive chaos armada to invade Vigilus. His objective was to destroy the planet's Blackstone deposits and permanently seal the Nakmund Gauntlet, dooming the Imperium Nihilus. After acquiring the ancient weapon known as the Void Claw to decimate much of Vigilus's surface, Abaddon's victory seemed certain. However, he was goaded by Imperial Commander Marnius Kalgar into a duel. Though he bested Kalgar in the battle and nearly slew him, the Ultramarines Chapter Master had used the, the distraction to, uh, to destroy the Vengeful Spirit with an allied Eldar vessel loaded with Death Strike missiles. Faced with slaying Kalgar or saving his prized flagship, Abaddon teleported away from Vigilus and left the war zone when the Vengeful Spirit made an emergency transition into the warp. Abaddon was able to rapidly locate the Vengeful Spirit and launched a boarding operation to reclaim it. On board, he found hundreds of his own Chaos Space Marines who had lost contact with their War Master battling for supremacy. Abaddon then swept across the vessel, restoring order, slaying any who opposed his will. He then took his seat in Lupercal's court and planned his next move.